In this video, we're gonna talk about eyes and visual symptoms. And I'm gonna throw in a little caveat here. We are talking about hallucinations, so visual hallucinations here. They could go either here or in the mind section. To be completely honest, the mind section was kind of long. So we moved it over into the vision section. Um, Dr. Peterson, you were just saying how much you love talking about visual symptoms. So I'm gonna let you take the lead here. Yeah, I love visual symptoms because I feel like it covers such a vast uh, array of the different body systems, right? Um, so things that we think about with vision, like we talked about in the vertigo and dizziness section, often there can be a change of vision with vertigo. Um, a lot of people describe seeing floaters. Um, and my favorite thing to ask is what do the floaters look like? Um, because some people's floaters are blue, green, red, streaks, white, sparks, um, black spots. Right. And so knowing what you're actually seeing with floaters um, and what affects them is really useful. Um, also seeing double or having trouble tracking on a on a page um, can be really useful. Um, change in visual acuity is a common symptom with these kids. I can't say that it's the most useful symptom um, because it can happen a lot. And there's a lot of remedies that cover that fluctuation and visual acuity, but it can, our kiddos can definitely fluctuate from having normal vision to long-sightedness, um, nearsightedness, um, and then things like strabismus and uh, lazy eye and things like that. And which way um, the eye is going is very useful and which eye um, as well. And then we have, um, hallucinations. So well, before we dive, thing, jump into hallucinations, I oh. just want to make sure that we touch on the fact that the, yeah. um, the, all of these symptoms are likely going to accompany other things. So they're the, the visual symptoms might occur on their own. Um, and it's useful to give us those if they do occur on their own, but if they're occurring as, um, in, co in co coordination with a headache or a vertigo, like Dr. Peterson's mentioned before, or pain or a mental symptom, you know, panic attacks, having a, a change in vision with a panic attack, um, those type of things can be really, really useful. So there is going to be a lot of overlap in a lot of symptoms that cross different um, videos that we're doing here. This is just like the best way that we could organize it. So just keep that in mind when you're considering reporting about other symptoms too, that there might be overlap here. Perfect. So let's talk about hallucinations. Um, I'll touch a little bit on like how useful they are, and then you can talk a little bit more about how to describe them if that's okay. Um, so hallucinations can be quite useful, especially in PANS. Now, if you happen to be watching this video and you're not somebody who has a PANS or PANDAS case, um, and let's say that you have something like schizophrenia, they're a little bit less useful in that state. Um, or even if you have uh, if you're an adult who has a likely PANS case that evolved to meet the criteria for schizophrenia, they may or may not be as useful. So I just wanna make sure we give that caveat. Um, when we do have a younger child um, with a true PANS case, or if you're dealing with something like bipolar disorder or schizoaffective disorder, the nature of the hallucinations um, do tend to be a little bit more useful because they're not as um, consistent across the board from person to person. Um, so Dr. Pearsons, why don't you go ahead and give a little bit of description of the way people could actually describe uh, hallucinations? Yeah, I think hallucinations can be really broad um, also and, and, and encompass a lot of things. So sometimes it's just seeing something in the corner of your eye or feeling like you see somebody walking in the corner of your vision. Or when you turn out the lights, you see black shadows. Um, or, you know, it can be full, full blown, you know, I feel like I'm seeing um, God or Jesus, but typically in, in, situations like that, we're actually dealing with more delusions um, where they think that they're talking with uh, these people more than actually seeing them. Um, so whenever somebody says that they've, you know, that they're seeing ghosts or they're having OCD thoughts about ghosts, you know, is it hearing um, hallucinations, like are actually hearing stuff or is it seeing? Um, yeah. So as much you can give us about the specifics is useful if they're, um, and, and the, with the specifics, we mean things like, are you seeing them at, like Dr. Peterson said, the corner of your eye, is it up above you? Is it below? Is it in, in the corner? Do you see something moving in the corner? Um, is it a flash that we interpret as something different? Um, so 
all of those things can be really helpful as well as the circumstances in which they occur. Um, as Dr. Pearson said, when the light goes off, when you lay down, when you're alone, um, at night, at this time every night, um, that type of thing is also really useful. All right, we'll talk a little bit more about the audio hallucinations in the hearing section, um, which we're gonna talk to you next. So hopefully you'll jump over to that video with us. And then I do wanna cover the eyes um, and actual conditions of the eyes. So things mm -hmm. like styes and um, conjunctivitis or blepharitis or um, any kind of skin conditions around the eyes, uh, changes in the pupils, um, really, really pinpoint pupils or big pupils or when the pupils come and go. Um, and then also with that, sometimes changes in sizes of things, things being looking too small or too big um, can be yep. useful as well. Yep. Um, and then we're going to talk touch about this on the face, but just in case you happen to look at the eyes, discoloration around the eyes may or may not be useful. Most kids with pans have some discoloration around their eyes. Um, so that's not as useful for finding a good remedy, it doesn't mean it's not a useful symptom to track for their progress, but it's probably not going to be as useful in selecting the right homeopathic remedy. And that's the goal of these videos is to help you give us the information that is useful for selecting the right homeopathic remedy. And I'm going to say it here, and I'll probably say it in other videos too, just so we hear it as many times as we can. Just because we say in this video, it's probably not super useful. It doesn't mean don't tell us. It just means if we're not staking all with it and we're not harping on that particular symptom, it's probably because it's not as useful. So still tell us, just give us grace if we're moving past it and you know taking the note and moving on. Okay. Um, all right. We'll see you on the next video.